Welcome to Grassroot Diplomat Talks, the podcast series produced by Grassroot Diplomat, discussing innovative practices of diplomacy for a modern world. I'm Jeanette Veens, the Director of Public Relations at Grassroot Diplomat, and I will be your host. Today I'm joined by Talon Raman Figueroa to discuss self-development and why it's so important to the practice of diplomacy. Welcome, Talon. Hello, Jeanette. How are you? I'm doing well, and you? I'm doing great, and I loved how robotic you sounded when you said my name. That was great. (laughs) I try, I try. I mean, I always talk about how important it is to really enunciate someone's name, because when you run through someone else's name, or when you say your own name, people tend to rush it quite quickly. No, that's very true. Saying people's names, saying it properly, saying it clearly, and not just people's names, but... Your point in general is such an important skill to learn, especially going into the field of diplomacy. I remember being in a conference, actually, where there was a young man who was still starting out, young professional, and he said his name three times, and in all three times, he rushed through it. He was using his native tongue when he was repeating his name, and even though the audience asked him to repeat what his name was he didn't slow down one bit and it was really frustrating because you don't want to ask someone their name three times and still not be given the answer that you're looking for. Being able to establish yourself is absolutely number one when you're trying to build rapport with your audience. No I've noticed the same thing at conferences how oftentimes I end up getting the names of people from you know uh, the panel sheet so it's written down because people do rush through their names and it really does disrupt that rapport you're building with your audience. And building rapport is one of those really fine-tuned skills that really sets you ahead of anyone else. Well, I think self-development is something that needs to be continuous. I mean, as an entrepreneur, you have to keep learning things and there's never a time when you feel as though you have just the right amount of knowledge. When there's something that I'm unsure about or when I feel as though I'm, I'm lacking a set of skills, I always I try to look up as many resources from other people as possible. And I think that's something that happens on a continuous basis. You can't just say, well, just because I left university, I'm done with education. Education should be informal and it should also be fun. And more often than not, the more fun you're having with something that you're engaged with, the more you are able to learn and pick it up and use those skills as effectively as possible. What was one of the biggest moments of self-development for you during your career so far? There are so many very high-level educated individuals who operate in the field. And of course, in diplomacy and international relations, a lot of the times you do pick up these skills as you go along because it is a very practical field. But um, you do also need to learn more softer skills and the softer skills are actually things that are not taught on a more formal level so I'm talking about things like how do you read body language how can you tell when someone is lying just by looking at the movement of their eyes maybe the non-verbal communications that you are communicating when you're not saying anything I mean these are all really important skills to have in our field and none of this is taught and these are things that I was taught through my own self-development because I felt as though these were really critical skills for anyone in, di- in diplomacy to have. And also um, something else that I notice in the field is the lack of awareness that a lot of people have about how they present themselves. And this comes down to the understanding of emotional intelligence. So knowing when you're either being too confident or too abrasive or the words that you choose to express yourself is maybe maybe a little too nationalistic or you're showing too much pride and this can sometimes be interpreted in a negative way because you're not really putting yourself in the shoes of someone else you're not really understanding how the things that you are saying is being negatively interpreted by the other person and I think having that awareness of the other is really important as well. And have you found that not everyone has the same ideas as you do about furthering education? Have you found that you got into the field and people are think, oh, I'm here, so I'm going to stop? Well, I think understanding the importance of it is, is, is a good start. If you don't know why something 
matters or if you don't see the relevance to it then why bother learning so you need to be able to apply it not just in the workplace but also in your personal life as well so how can my relationship with my parent or my partner or my siblings or my friends be improved through how I communicate and present myself I think start off on a personal level and then build it up into your professional level because something else that I've realized is that we all have different personas depending on number one our situation and number two the people that we are with so we are very different people with people we are very close to like our friends or our partners um, and we are very different on a professional level so what sort of persona do you take on when you're with your boss or when you're with a trusted colleague or when you're with someone that you've never met before so having those understanding is quite basic but it's very important in order to establish how you are like with other people. Yeah, I would definitely agree. As a young professional, recent graduate of university, you definitely worked on theories, case studies, essays, but you rarely got to work on the finer points of emotional intelligence. You would do presentations, but you wouldn't get to look in depth at well, what does it mean that you are talking in this tone? What does it mean that you've taken this stance? Have you looked at your body language? These are things that are really worth knowing. How would you suggest young professionals achieve those skills and get that experience that would set them apart in the field? And how is grassroots diplomat working to help people with the issue of emotional intelligence? The funny thing is I go to a lot of diplomatic networking events, I often see either head of states or high level diplomatic officials attending these events. Um, many of them are countries you rarely know about. Um, you don't really see countries who are known to be powerhouses in the international community. The one thing I've noticed in these networking events is the fact that diplomats tend to only stay within their own group, meaning their own region. So. If you belong to a country in Latin America, you're most likely to stay with other Latin American countries, just like how if you're representing um, an African state, then you're most likely to stay with other African states. And from my point of view, that's not really what diplomacy is about. It should be a mix of countries. You should be able to learn and build a productive relationship with as many different countries as possible because you are all there for very similar reasons and that's to number one strengthen bilateral relations and number two to represent your national interests as well. I find that on the field itself diplomats are not networking as well as I would expect them to so I found myself in a situation where amongst these very high level ambassadors I'm actually the one introducing ambassador one with high commissioner number two and ambassador number three who all belong in different continents and I felt as though I was the shark you know in this ocean amongst fishes and it felt wrong it felt like I was doing reverse role playing I should be the one who was introduced to these ambassadors not the other way around um, and that just didn't feel right to me. No it doesn't sound at all what you would think of diplomacy. In fact, you, you would often imagine that diplomats are one of the best networkers in the world, and I was really disappointed when that wasn't the case. What would you recommend to want to be diplomats on how to establish a solid foundation in networking amongst other self-development skills? You need to know the reason why you are networking. What is the purpose of you attending this event and meeting the people that you would want to meet? So knowing the why um, will help you to then move forward to the who, i.e. who do you want to meet in this in this event and for what purpose. So there needs to be some sort of strategic planning behind the reasoning to why you're attending. Now as a diplomat you probably want to go there because you want to expand your network or you want to get to know other cohorts. You just want to network with people who are very similar or you have an ulterior agenda and that's well Maybe I can find out which of these countries can be an ally for my country or, you know, there could be so many reasons why you go to these networking events. But you need to be able to establish whether it's personal. So personal could be I want to be able to make more friends because I'm new to the city and these people have been here for a while. Um, or I need, I'm here because 
my ministry or my head of state or my boss told me to attend this and I'm just here to, I guess, show, show our face. Grassroot Diplomat is already working on a lot of different initiatives to help with self-development. They have their diplomatic coaching session, as well as a larger diplomatic development training, which offers really in-depth coaching, discussion, skill tailoring to help people who want to further their skills in diplomacy. Are there any other new projects on the line for Grassroot Diplomat and self-development? Funny you say that because you inspired me to write a new book called The Diplomatic Planner. And I thought it was really funny when you said how um, the Diplomatic Development Workbook would be a really great way for people to further develop their own skills in diplomacy. Um, so thanks, Jeanette. You gave me three months, work, <laughs> three months worth of extra work, but it was all worth it in the end. So the Diplomatic Planner is a self-development workbook, which is 100% practical with exercises, toolkits and all sorts of other fun ways to develop your skills that are necessary and relevant to the field of international relations and diplomacy. So chapter one, for example, talks about knowing thyself. So the more you know about yourself, what your motivations, what your values are and what drives you to move forward the better you are in a position to understand where your skills are, where your weaknesses are and things that you need to continue working on. And I feel as though people who go into diplomacy, they go in not fully knowing what the job is. When you talk to a young diplomat versus a very seasoned diplomat, they give you very different answers on why they joined the service to begin with. Now, if you were to talk to um, an ambassador who's been around for maybe 30 years um, and also see the difference between what a female ambassador versus a male ambassador says again you will you'll hear very different stories so the reason why I'm bringing this up is because what young professionals fail to think about is their long-term career goals and also their personal goals in life and the two things very closely do coincide because when you think about what diplomats do and how they operate you'll find that diplomats tend to move around country to country at least on average every four years they may have the opportunity to go back to their home countries and and stay working as a civil servant for maybe again four years but think about it in the long run you're young right now you have no responsibility you may have no family of your own But then five years down the line, you may meet someone, you may get married, you may start to think about having a family, and then your kids start to grow up. What happens to your career? Do you really want to move your family from country to country to country and think about all of the disruptions that your spouse will have, your family will have, and you will have as well because you constantly have to pick up and move and um, reclimatize yourself to a new environment all over again. This is something that a lot of young professionals don't think about. And these these are some of the things that I hear older ambassadors use as a warning sign. Do you really want to do this to your family? Now, the difference between a male ambassador and a female ambassador from the stories that I've heard. Female ambassadors, a lot of them actually go to another country by themselves. A lot of the times, their, their spouse are less likely to travel with them because they have their own careers to pursue. Now, um, I've actually written a paper on this um, discussing women in diplomacy and more often than not women are I guess culturally and socially expected to drop their own pursuits and support their their husbands in these missions Um, so these are some of the things that you need to think about think about your long-term future and whether the lifestyle of a diplomat will be suitable for you in the next 10 20 even 30 years time and these are some of the things that the diplomatic planner will um, will help you with is is having a more long-term strategy on where you want to go in your career and also the kind of skills that you need to be resilient and be effective and when I mention what it means to be effective it also means being a leader within the field of diplomacy and that's something that's not been picked up on by any organization I've seen so far. So the diplomatic planner, is this aimed at young professionals or can anyone pick this up at any point during their career and find useful skill building activities? 
I think initially it's aimed at people who want to move into the field of international relations so you don't necessarily have to be right at the beginning of your career it can also be in the middle of your career when you're trying to re-establish what your values are what your goals are what your motivation is um, during that point in your life um, but I also think this is a very useful toolkit for diplomats and people who are already operating in the field of international relations because you can imagine um, a lot of young people will go up to a civil servant or an ambassador or a director and the first question you get asked is uh, I want to find out more information on how to get into the field how do I do that what skills do you need do I need an internship you know it's those kind of very mundane very repetitive questions and I think for seasoned practitioners this could be a very good reference point to actually pass on to young people as well so I think it's a bit of both Having seen the planner, I can definitely say it is quite the piece of work. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to do a test run of it. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm quite curious to know, Jeanette, from your point of view, what are the things that young professionals struggle with, um, particularly in the field of diplomacy? One of the ways I think young people struggle within the field of diplomacy is that first step. How do I get myself into the field? What are my options? Oftentimes, you are only aware of the sort of one track approach, you know, going through the government. But there are so many more ways in which people can get involved into diplomatic and international relations. And that is what young professionals are missing out on. That's the information that isn't necessarily immediately made known to them. And once they figure that out, it's, oh, how are my skills relevant to this aspect of the field? Or how do I make my skills transferable? How do I make my skills unique and useful? How do I stand out amongst the crowd? Those are some of the top concerns that I know I've experienced and that I've seen other people experiencing trying to get into the field of diplomacy. Well, that's perfect because that's exactly what the Diplomatic Planner is all about, is, is actually providing you with the tools um, and also the practical tools to be able to answer those questions and really help shape your, your career in the field. So, you know what, I think it might be really good if you did a podcast once you've reviewed the Diplomatic Planner and talk about all the things that you've learned. <laughs> all right, sign me up for it. That's a date. <laughs> <laughs> you have been listening to Grassroot Diplomat Talks. Join us again soon to discuss the practices of diplomacy, and I hope you will consider joining our organization. For further information, please visit www.grassrootdiplomat.org. I'm Jeanette Beans, and we look forward to hearing from you.